What up my freaks, Ruinous Insight here with part 22 of my Total War Warhammer 3 Malachi McKyson Immortal Empires campaign. So as we saw last time, Tamarkan met Grumbrindle in battle, or at the very least he met uh, hundreds upon hundreds of troll hammer torpedoes as they brought both him and Bubabolos down. And it went fairly well for us and we are not so damaged and can continue attacking Tamarkan's territories now that his main stack is is gone. In addition to that, we did move towards the Griffin Wood of uh, Draika, the Wargrove of Woe, but it looks like she wanted to back off, though I did have an idea between the episodes. And perhaps in setting up an ambush and then I guess setting you up out here, and we might be able to force them into a fight. Maybe. 45% likelihood. Since they won't fight the two armies together, maybe we can uh, get that going. I still find it odd that they didn't fight because they have two and a half stacks to our two and they're pretty solid stacks also got to remember the draika superpowers her uh, malevolent dryads she's no slouch herself she has koadil in here somewhere as well who's very very strong and has a bunch of nasty abilities and uh, they have a bunch of treemen and tons of treekin as well so a bit strange i think one of the best things that sfo does is make the ai a little bit more aggressive and it makes it more likely to take battles and uh, to actually attack in siege battles rather than, you know, sieging you for eight years. And that's also really nice. But anyway, in terms of what we got to do this particular turn, I think the only thing that we do, judging by the fact that we seem to have moved everybody, is to attack with Grimbrindle. So we may as well jump in. Uh, what do we have here in terms of defenses? Nothing crazy, they got some Bile Trolls in the second stack, it's going to be weaker than Tamarkans, but I think considering this is a red territory, we can't really risk uh, auto-resolving as we might take too much damage, so we're going to fight it, plus I ain't tired of watching those Iron Drakes do work as yet, so, and we can continue to enjoy that. Go. Alright, what did what did Grombi say there? I couldn't uh, couldn't quite make it out. It was too guttural. It was just like I, I, <laughs> I don't know what he said there. Uh, but if anybody actually made it out, please let me know because I'd be uh, I'd be curious. Uh, could have been Rend and something. He might have said something Kazalid, but uh, anyway. Anyway, here we go. I don't imagine that the enemy army stands too much of a chance against us since this is effectively a weaker version of the uh, uh, of the Tamarkan army that this army has already beaten. Plus, we have a pretty solid position here, though. The hills will be alive with the sound of gunnery, but uh, now the hills will shield the enemy to some degree here. Anyway, it looks like the enemy lord will be first into the fray, and this is why we backed our thunder barge off. Rather than letting the uh, rot fly riding uh, plague bearer, plague hammer, eh? No, not a bad name. Uh, rather than let this guy go go after the battle barge and you rather knock him from the sky and with our range units which will probably be capable of doing so fairly quickly that said we gotta back Grombi off because our units will kill him if we let them and in fact it looks like they did well, maybe 10 to 15 percent HP damage anyway here come a few more enemies and ooh I love that flight of troll hammer torpedoes combined with those organ guns knocking the rot flies from the skies right quick damn effective against units like that and hey we got more rot flies where that came from more plague drones i suppose since we got plague bearers riding them but not to worry we got more uh, we got more ammo where that came from as well All right, I love how the uh, the Thunder Barge is also uh, firing upon them as they go. Anyway, here come the rest of the enemy army. We're going to try our best to focus down those uh, Bile Trolls, Beast of Nurgle, etc. At the very least with our um, Troll Hammers. Grombie's going to see off a unit of Doggos before they reach our line, just to make sure that they uh, are not able to silence our guns and flamethrowers even for a second oh yeah look at those uh, uh, look at those troll hammers all the little explosions uh, that they do in the enemy lines as they approach it's quite entertaining 
Anyway, looks like Grombi gets a very short duel against the Beast of Nurgle out in the center as he uh, blocks him off, but the Beast of Nurgle gets ripped apart once again. And by the Troll Hammers, our Battle Barge continues flying overhead, dropping bombs and firing every which way and that it can, while our supporting cast, our units of uh, regular gyrocopters, are doing their best to uh, bombard any enemies that try to flank us. Oh, uh, looks like the Scolder Guard are firing, but this unit of Iron Drakes will be stuck briefly by the unit of uh, Nurglings, although the battle will probably be ours shortly. A nice charge into our units of Iron Drakes from the Bile Trolls allowed them to actually do some damage, though the uh, various buffs that we have allowed us to get a pretty massive increase of various resistances and thus survive the charge. Though I suppose these guys could use some resistances of their own. Which they don't have. They probably will get them out of the uh, Morgrim's favored trait, or no wait, or whatever the Capstone red line trade is for Iron Drakes. I believe Morgrim's favorite is only for artillery, but, well, artillery and flyers, maybe. Anyway, uh, looks like the enemy army is booking it on out of there, having left a bloody spot. And look at all this. This is just explosions from our uh, units as the enemy uh, advanced. I love the fact that it le leaves all of these craters and uh, a sort of scorched ground behind. Fantastic. A lovely little fight, even if it was a little bit easy, but we start off easy, and we'll go harder later. Alright, not bad. Certainly better than we would have done in Auto Resolve. A little bit of damage on the Battle Barge and a little bit on Grombi, though I suspect that a decent bit of that on both of them was from friendly fire, especially Grombi as he tends to be out front in front of all those troll hammers and organ gun uh, ammunition. And uh, we got two losses on one of the units of Iron Drakes, which, uh, well, we probably would have sustained a lot more due to the charge of the Bile Trolls, but a uh, uh, clutch entrenchment from one of the Master Engineers and the Rune of Negation giving 40% ward save from the Runesmith made them very, very resistant both to the Troll Charge and to our own friendly fire. Nice. I guess we're going to sack the place and then reoccupy it. I hope that we still have movement. Yeah, we got plenty. We're fine. And another stonemason, which we seem to get just constantly. Gallows tree for furry. Well, not for us, though. For Boris, but whatever. And we'll take the Plains of Zenbajin next, which should be worth quite a bit of sack valley. Oh, did I ever give you back your prospector? Yes, I did. Oh, good job, Pastor Runas. I'm surprised that I remembered that. So, yeah. And definitely sacking a few of these places should be worth our time. Eh, honestly, 9.1k isn't as much as I thought it would be for a tier 4. Four capital it would be better, but I think the Volary was a lot, wasn't it? Well, I we can't see right now, but I'm pretty sure the Volary was a lot. 27k with uh, Grombi, and I don't know how much it was with Malachi, but I'm sure it's fine as well. Anyway, I believe that's all that we get to do for this particular turn. Let's double check Diplo just in case. And oh, Hawkland. Oh, wow, Etain really wants to trade. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense that. They want to trade since they're kind of dying. Mm. And you want 2.4k money for this. The thing is, it would pay for itself pretty darn quickly because we... Uh, uh, yeah, we could. We could also just declare war on the Dreadfleet. Frankly, everybody hates the Dreadfleet anyway, so this might not be the worst idea in the world. Pretty much everybody would like us for being at war with them. Yeah, fine. Let's do that. Very well. And are we still able to get some kind of alliance thing going with Hawkland? Uh, I guess the question is, do we want to? Is there a benefit to this? Hmm. I mean, they might survive. And if they survive, we should uh, keep an eye on that. Grim War, 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 on Peace, that's irrelevant to us. Robsman Clan still waiting for our betrayal. Uh, Hawkland and Non-Aggression Pact and Trade Agreement, and give us 2,000 gold. Plus, this trade agreement is fairly lucrative, so very nice. All right, more money coming in per turn. Those two trade agreements bumped us up by about 1,000 gold extra per turn, which is nice, because we still got, like... 
war armies that we've got planned in the near future and we've got to retrofit a couple of the existing armies as well so and that's all on the way and just got to keep fighting while we do anyway i believe it's time it's time it's now time to end the turn this guy might very well attack ungram or cobalt he does have a full stack with arachnorox and black orcs in it after all there's Drika if the ambush should succeed and i think there was something else here Oh, right, the ambush of Belagar as well. Something's gotta work, right? One thing, at least, game. I really shouldn't have opened my mouth, because now none of it's gonna work, but anyway. Uh, damage building, Verdano, Signor, because the uh, bloody hands are too close. Outpost upgrade available in Erengrad. I mean, we did want to eventually upgrade this. Do we want to waste the 4,000 gold on it right now? Funnily enough, they only have military buildings, really, in Erengrad right now, which is why we didn't build it before, so it may not be super worth our time. Karaza Karak outpost useless, and I believe that's it. I mean, we did gain a little bit of extra gold. We may want to go quickly through the buildings, just in case there's a few sort of cheap money-making buildings that we can make, as they will eventually pay for themselves. Karakadrak, 3.2k. It's a little bit steep, and it'll take... Uh, let's see. 30 turns? Okay, I yeah, know, it's not gonna happen. It only gains us an extra 100 gold per turn, meaning, yeah, it's gonna take too long for it to pay itself back, so I'd rather build it for free with the Engineer Core Tower of Crack. Uh, 2,000 gold to build the next level of the Engineer's Guild Hall, though on the other hand, we're going to be moving you over here anyway, though frankly, it's gonna take a long time. Nah, just build it now, then. 2,000 gold isn't so much that we really have to concern ourselves with it. Zufbar, you can hold on to the reinforced gate for now, though we will not need it. Later on, we also have that landmark, the Bugman's Brewery, at uh, Karak Dromar. But we can't build it right now, because it needs the defenses more than anything else. Uh, everything else, I think, here can be ignored. A little bit tempted to build the foundry all the way up, but... Uh, mm. Probably not necessary in that location, at least not at the current time. Troll Fjord, you're waiting. Yeah, you know what? I don't think there's anything to build. I think uh, we've already done it last episode. All right, all right. Let's, let's hold on to the cash. I'm sure there will be plenty of other places to spend it. Oh, these guys as well. All right, well. Who's going to attack us? Maggot Host, you are going to cry for peace, but no. That's not happening right now. It would be nice to get another uh, Tamarcon defeat trait, though. I'm not going to lie. It is very, very nice defeat trade. It's, it's, it's ridiculous, though. Like, it's an OP defeat trade, or at least it feels like it. Because our short victory reward, our reward for victory of the campaign, was plus three heroes. And that's the same reward as defeating Tamarkan. I mean, a little much game. Uh, but anyway, uh, Grimgore. Yeah. Oh, Grimgore's back. I didn't even realize it was him. I guess he came back this turn. He's attacking with Arachnorox. He's got Orc Boar Boy Biggins, a very solid army, close in victory, and he decided not to attack Ungram. Smart move, as this army is a lot more uh, basic and thus in danger. Plus, he wouldn't have to contend with Ungram. And certainly Cobalt can't deal with him because he's on that anvil of doom and isn't a good fighter. All right, seems like an interesting time. Go. Alrighty, here we go. I'm pretty excited about this battle. It should be a toughie, I would imagine, as the enemy has a pretty solid stack. And now that Grimgore has rejoined the uh, the fray, he's going to be a problem. He was a problem for Godrek, he was a problem for Ungrim, and there's basically nothing in this army that can really kill him. There's a decent chance we might be able to bring him down with the cannons, uh, but the cannons have to focus on other things as the enemy army advances towards us, which means by and large ignoring Grimgore. And the problem with that is that uh, while the strategy works for many other lords who are in... you can ignore them and delete their army, like we saw with Vlad, with Sigvald, etc, etc, and they'll simply break, Grimgore is unbreakable, and thus we have to bring him down even after his army is done for. And... what the heck are you doing, cannons? 
I think they're just repositioning themselves. Anyway, looks like the enemy is attempting to flank us from several directions. Now Orc Boar Boy Biggins are leading one side with two units, and then on the other side another Orc Boar Boy Biggins and a unit of spiky rollers. Uh, both of them very, very dangerous if they are able to get a charge into our, uh, um, let's say, relatively fragile Slayer Pirates. But we are still going to move the Slayer Pirates forward to help the cannons out and try to delete as many of those uh, cannons units as we can. It's best generally to do that sort of thing and sally out from your formation in order to uh, make sure that the enemy's cav can't hit you at the same time as their infantry, because obviously, and that's pretty dangerous. Now, the enemy had one artillery piece of goblin rock lobber, but we summoned those gyro captures on top of them, drop bombs, and we should be able to get them out of there soon enough. They have done a little bit of damage to our thunderers with grudge rakers, uh, but by the looks of it, not so much damage that we need to be concerned. Our cannons have been firing upon a uh, one of the two Arachnorok spiders that the enemy has brought, and it is down to about 40% HP. But now the cannons are going to need to switch to various other units as well. The enemy does have two units of Black Orcs. A bunch of trolls and stuff here as well, and we'll want to get the uh, Black Orcs heavily damaged before they get to us. Ah, look at those Grudge Rakers fire again. Can't wait to build an army centered around them. We got the Iron Breakers also sending their satchel charges flying into the Black Orcs, knocking them down and allowing a few more shots to come in from our uh, from our Grudge Rakers. The enemy Arachnorok has arrived, but is immediately brought down by the parting shots or the last shots from those cannons. And it looks like the enemy army has or finally reached us. Trolls have managed to get around us. Some stone trolls and river trolls alike charging into those darn thunderers with grudge rakers. And just like that artillery piece focusing that same unit, I guess this AI really doesn't like them. Out over here, we have the grumbling guard and the regular dwarf warriors fighting some orc boar boy biggins. But the arachnorok spider has joined the fray and some black orcs have as well. Fortunately, though, it looks like our slayer party pirates should be able to uh, sort of run around and annoy that unit of uh, black orcs and kite them around, preventing them from joining the fray, at the very least for now. And if they turn to run down here, then we can shoot them in the back with our armor-piercing bullets. So it does work, even if it doesn't feel like the most slayery way to fight, admittedly. But on the other hand, I mean, they're not stupid. They know they get obliterated by that unit of black orcs. Just because they're seeking their doom doesn't mean they shouldn't actually try to kill off the enemy. Anyway, Grimgor is just fighting our Thane and the Norgrimling's Ironbreakers, but neither of those has any kind of chance against Big Boy there. And I'm gonna get a few shots from our Thunderers. Gotta be careful with that as we probably do damage to our own units. And out here we have Black Orcs down to 10. And these guys suffered a lot under the artillery and such, but they're still fighting with only 10 units left. A pretty nice shot, though. I like them uh, sort of uh, fighting back to back, surrounded, slowly uh, being obliterated, but still fighting on. Certainly, uh, and certainly respectable. Although, really, this unit should have broken at this point. 250, wait, 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 259, 37 HP remaining, four Black Orcs remaining, and they're still fighting. And a rear charge comes in, and they're still fighting. Oh, AI leadership cheats. Look at this. Down to three. Are they actually going to fight to the death, despite the fact that they're not unbreakable? Huh. Go figure. That's impressive. And wavering tired, down to three units. 56 HP, 50, 32 HP, 59 HP, whatever. 32 now. They're really fighting to the last. Nine, 7 HP, 2 units remaining. <laughs> and they're only wavering still. Game. What is this? Alright, and the last one of them does go down. But damn, and that, uh, well, it was impressive, even if it did feel a little cheaty uh, from the AI. Anyway, Grimgor is continuing to be distracted by our uh, our Norgling's Iron Breakers. They're not going to be able to hurt him at all, but what can you do? Out here, the Grumbling Guard are still getting into combat with those Boar Boy Biggins who just repeatedly cycle charge in and out. 
but are slowly starting to lose units. The Black Orcs are still chasing around this unit of Slayer Pirates, but the uh, uh, the cannons have now got a firing solution on said uh, Black Orcs as well, which has started to deplete their numbers. We are going to have to focus this Arachnorak Spider down as well as its made mincemeat of the Slayer Pirates, who have not really hurt it all that much, maybe 25 to 30 percent damage. Out here we managed to send our Grudge Rakers around, and now they're firing into the last sort of remnants of the enemy's main line. Some Gobbos working together with some um, Biggins here. And while this will probably hurt our uh, Dwarf Warriors here, we don't really care about the uh, Dwarf Warriors. They're just a holdover from when this army was put together, so it doesn't really matter all that much. Our Rune of Wrath and Ruin comes down, and between that and the Grudge Rakers, it looks like the Biggins and the uh, Gobbos will rout. The Arachnorok Spider reduced down to 40 Five maybe percent HP oh, with the cannon fire is gonna shatter so are the boar boy biggins and with that the battle is not quite ours as I said Mr. Grimroar unbreakable unshakable will keep fighting just like his black works and has so far killed off 17 or Grimlings iron breakers not bad not bad at all, considering we've seen the Orc Tide break upon this unit many a time. But it's a pretty ideal situation for a Grimgor, as these guys are good at holding the line with their massive melee defense and armor, but he's armor-piercing, he's got crazy melee attack, and they have low melee attack and low weapon strength and no armor-piercing, or at least very little armor-piercing. Not to worry, though, we've got more units where that came from, and it's time for the Quarrelers to do work. Maybe a little bit of work from the Master Engineer as well. Hopefully we can just pincushion Grimgore while he's distracted, killing off all these Dwarf Warriors. He uh, did also nearly kill off our Thane, who's down to about 15% HP. But I guess it does work out that we had Quarlers in this army. Eventually, when it becomes the Thunderer Force, uh, Grimgore probably wouldn't be posing that much of a threat anymore because he'd just get gunned down by lots and lots of thunderers focusing him down. At least I would think so. What are his resistances like? 15 ward, 15 missile. Yeah, I would expect the thunderers would be able to obliterate him. Maybe a little bit of help from the cannons. Anyway, uh, Grimgor continuing to kill off plenty of dwarf warriors. Got 12k damage on him now, but the pincushioning is starting to take its toll. A few more volleys, and it looks like he will finally go down. Oh, it uh, looks like he wants to charge in and fight off some or kill some of the slayers. Ooh, Norgrimlings. What are you doing? <laughs> Don't check those blasting charges at him. Slash satchel charges. And a few more parting shots from the Grudge Rakers together with those quarrels. And with that, Grimgor goes down at last. A Pyrrhic victory, but a great fight against a pretty solid orky force. I'd be happy to use a force with all of those Boar Boy Biggins and Arachnoroks and Black Orcs and whatnot. A well done to this army. All right, a very, very nice fight, and Grimgore, of course, is an absolute monster, and with this particular army, there wasn't anything really that could bring him down, but, uh, well, obviously, this is just a bunch of random troops. It's supposed to be eventually eventually the Thunderer army, but uh, we're gonna have to wait on that. Plus, these mountain battles aren't uh, particularly conducive to getting good firing solutions for our uh, uh, for our artillery, which makes it a little bit more difficult, which is uh, nice as well. Anyway, uh, we got money, we got healing. I take it they don't have another army nearby, but nonetheless, I'm inclined to say healing might be more important, as we are in enemy territory, and we still have other territories to take nearby. And, oh, would you look at that? The ambush did fail, but Draka did indeed still attack. So that worked out. We actually managed to uh, uh, bring her force to battle. Appreciate it. All right, well. Uh, Stance tunneling. You're not in tunneling, Stance. Why are you lying, game? Why would you lie? <laughs> Uh, well, whatever. Whatever. Not important. Let's see about uh, destroying these particular armies. Should be a pretty damn big battle. Away we go.
Alrighty, here we go, and here we are, and it looks like the enemy will draw first blood, killing off a few of our Longbeards with those arrows of Kurnos. Uh, now that the uh, now that the Wood Elves have sort of a uh, sort of an equivalent to artillery in that. Uh, anyway, the enemy did something I wasn't really expecting. I didn't even really notice this because I was uh, moving units. The no, Wastalker is hidden and he has snipes, so we can't actually see him, but at some point I noticed that there were arrows moving in and knocking out the uh, the occasional unit of longbeards here. Oh, wow. Damn. Kills three with a single shot. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. He's got 17 kills on him. Uh, but it won't last as we finally spot him by summoning our gyrocopters overhead. And the cannon fire combined with the gyrocopter fire should eventually bring the Waystalker down. Another parting arrow of Kurnus, but it looks like that one did whiff and didn't hit the Thunderers that it was clearly aiming for. Anyway, this guy's gonna get focused down. It's gonna cost us a little bit of our ammunition. We're even gonna send in our quarrelers to make sure that uh, the uh, Waystalker goes down and goes down they shall now our reinforcements have moved on to the field but so have Draka's and it looks like Draka will move towards us even as we attempt to take a let's say hopefully decent position with our reinforcing units unfortunately we've got a lot of slow moving artillery pieces a couple of grudge throwers and the flame cannons over on the reinforcing side which is going to make it quite dangerous now I also noticed something interesting or weird or annoying depending on how you look at it all the way from okay what's the range of our cannons okay it looks like here all the way from over here our cannons have been attempting to fire at the great hawks with their regular non-grape shot and every single shot of the cannons has missed the uh, Okay, so the troll hammers seem to be fine at that but it's very strange that the Cannons seem to miss. Okay, now we're firing grape shots, so maybe that's a little bit more likely to hit the enemy. Maybe. Kind of hard to say. Do these guys have some kind of dodge trait that is hidden? Because, yeah, look. They're still taking barely any damage from cannon fire, which doesn't seem right. Huh. Maybe they're usually so vulnerable to a cannon fire that uh, they gave them hidden dodge straight or maybe they always had and I just didn't know about it kind of interesting anyway whether they are, are not particularly vulnerable to cannons or not they are very much vulnerable to uh, pistols and iron drakes so they will go down Although it looks like they've got more where that came from. Fell bats, or actually those are just cave bats. Uh, cave bats and more great cocks moving in, and by the looks of it, getting staggered by our units, causing them to waver. And they'll get knocked out of the sky. A little bit of help from our, uh, hmm, from our axe-throwing goblin cures, though I'm not entirely sure that those hit them either. Kind of hard to say. Anyway, this is just the sort of skirmish opening to the battle. We are also forced to use a few of our units of Slayer Pirates over on this flank to screen the retreat or to the motion into formation of our uh, Grudge Throwers, as otherwise they will be overrun and destroyed. This does, however, mean that uh, the uh, Slayer Pirates are going to be forced to fight the Malevolent Dryads and the enemy uh, Treekin that the enemy has brought as well. Not a great matchup for those guys and they will probably go down if we don't send them reinforcements or if we don't retreat them but we got other things to worry about more enemies moving in our uh, goblin hewers are hewing trees and just fine i mean they're throwing axes after all and uh, looks like malevolent dryads are, or malevolent uh, tree men are moving in as well three of them out here and we're going to try to focus them down with the cannons and with our troll hammers as soon as they're in range though the troll hammers are working on the malevolent treekin out here looks like a few more units are trying to get around us with these bears uh, i guess they want to take the really long route but they're not visible anymore since they're uh, moving through the forest which ain't great since we have the peak gate guard guarding this place but they're obviously not going to be able to guard all of that we'll have to see 
The dwarf warriors that were sort of out front in front of the army are pretty much broken, but that's hardly surprising, and they were there you know, for a reason, because they're one of the units that are meant to be sacrificed. More enemies moving in, but the goblin hewers are now starting to focus down those Treekin. Tree men are still too far away, but the cannons and the uh, troll hammers will hopefully work on them well. And yeah, look at that. Treekin are dropping quite nicely when we actually manage to get the goblin hewers into range. And the last of them should be obliterated like that. Flame Cannon has finally reached the hills and is finally able to fire upon the enemy. It looks like the Grudge Throwers are nearly there as well. And perhaps we'll be able to help out a little bit. The enemy does also, I believe, have some reinforcements that are on the way. Nah. So they will potentially get some here, but we'll see. Looks like uh, some of the units on the flank appear to have stopped for some reason. Not entirely sure why. There may be too many units on the screen at once. I don't know whether this is a limitation of the game or whether it is a limitation of my PC, which is quite old at this point. Uh, but, well, what can you do? I have, so, I have certainly seen it happen before. Where, huh. The heck. Also, is it me, or have the textures of the Goblin Hewers been extremely screwy? I mean, uh, they've been screwy for me pretty much every time I've seen them. Either no texture at all, or here they appear to be loading the texture of the Malevolent Dryads. Like, I'm, th that's what it is, isn't it? It's very strange. I wonder why. Once again, hopefully it's it's not my PC, but anyway. Uh, looks like an enemy malevolent uh, treekin, tree man rather, moves in but gets hewn down and by uh, Callum Deeprow, our demon slayer. There is another treekin out here, but it looks like axes go flying, troll hammer torpedoes, cannons, and this treekin will fall, unlike the other one did. Very, very nice. Our long beards are still holding the main line as well, but the enemy still has plenty of dryads and treekin where that came from, and the dryads at the very least are going to rout and rally and rejoin the fray. Still, we have managed to keep our artillery safe, though at the cost of quite a few of our melee units, and the dwarf warriors and several of our units of dwarf slayers, the ones which were forced to screen the retreat of our artillery. And speaking of our artillery, some giant spiders have moved on in and hit the uh, grudge throwers in the back. We have moved one of our grudge settler hammers units, the reserve unit, to attack them, and then the same thing is happening here. Good move by the AI to do this effectively at the same time. Uh, the feral bears have indeed moved all the way around through the tree line where we couldn't see them and are now hitting our cannons in the back which is going to protect their uh, uh, their malevolent tree cannon whatever other or tree men and tree can I guess all right well it's time for the goblin hewers to do some work and I mean the goblin hewer Peruse. They have no more uh, uh, no more ammunition but they still have axes of plenty for the bears all right, and of course we turn around the troll hammers and the whirlers and start uh, pin cushioning those bears as well, and it looks like they will melt reasonably quickly, keeping our cannons alive, if just barely. Out on the rightmost flank, the battle is fierce, and it looks like our slayer pirates are about to collapse. I believe one of the units has been pretty much destroyed, this one. And considering they're facing off against a pile of malevolent treekin, that's hardly surprising. And I'll say, doesn't this make you wonder why the heck Draka didn't want to fight this before? Like, she has the numerical advantage and solid units against most of the units we have in this army. Very odd. But yeah, the vanilla AI has always been... Uh, has always been kind of unnecessarily cowardly, only taking battles it feels like it knows it really will win. Anyway, it looks like we managed to see off most of the enemy main line that was attacking the center, but the flanks are still embroiled in combat. We did send uh, Burundan Stoneheart, our lord, and both thanes out here to try to help the Peak Gate Guard hold the line. And ooh, the Malevolent Dryads are looking pretty fantastic in this sort of um, dark area, less so for the Goblin Hewers, whose textures remain quite broken. I do like the uh, glow of the Malevolent Dryads, but I've always felt that the Malevolent uh, Dryad or the Malevolent Forest Spirit factions have looked much better than the regular Forest Spirits. 
Yeah, all right, and it looks like the Dryads have gotten a few more units of a tree can moving in to help. I actually don't know why the Goblin Fewers were there, but that's all right. Corlers have also moved in this way to try to help out, and I do believe Coadil is uh, trying to move in. And is the coolest looking tree, man. And though he really shouldn't have a physical form, as it were, but anyway. Or at the very least, he shouldn't look quite like this. Uh, he is heading towards us, but the troll hammers and the cannons are all focusing him down, and we'll see if he manages to reach our main line. Perhaps the AI should have waited for the uh, reinforcements to arrive before moving towards us, but then I suppose that they had 40 units on the screen, so they couldn't really do this. And the problem there is that they really could have used Coadil with the main assault, and due to his magical abilities, but alas, he goes down long after the rest of the enemy army has gone. And there we are. With that, with Coadil's fall, the malevolent forest spirits shatter, and very lawfully appropriately so. Uh, but they did give us a pretty fantastic fight. Look at all the damage on so many of our units. This goblin cures basically destroyed all of the... Well, lots of the goblin cures and slayer pirates are heavily damaged. Our main line of longbeards pretty badly hurt. Uh, Kalan uh, is down to uh, maybe 30% of his HP. A very nice fight. All right, there we go. Was that so hard, AI? Was it? Uh, it was a pretty great battle. And we actually did suffer pretty significant losses on a lot of units. Lost one of our units of Slayer Pirates and came very, very close to losing two of our Goblin Hewer units and one of our cannons, as well as uh, plenty of assorted melee and ranged troops. A glorious fight. And all you had to do was actually fight. Now imagine, Draika, if you could actually actually stayed in Griffin Wood, where you would have had an even bigger advantage due to leadership buffs and the various other buffs conferred by it being a main settlement. Well, if we fought inside the settlement, but at least it would have been your own territory, and I'm sure there were, would have been other advantages from buildings and uh, whatnot uh, that you could have used. Plus, we would have had to be uh, on the offensive and thus would have had a potentially more dangerous position. Anyway, uh, it was a great fight. And funnily enough, it was the same map that uh, had that disappointing adventure battle, where the where it was once again against the uh, against the Wood Elves and specifically the malevolent tree spirits and well we got our proper wood elf horde battle on uh, this particular map so i'm pretty happy about it uh let's see we got a 109 oath gold chain bed but i think i think we need to heal we have to chase these armies down and yeah i don't see much of a choice in avoiding that so we'll do that and the turn hadn't ended but i don't imagine ah, ah what's this beast catcher will attack Beast catches will attack Vissenland. Okay, sure, enter. We're inside of Ally. All right, Supervisor for somebody, Hide Striker for Cobalt. Oh, actually, good thing that uh, Grimgor then didn't attack uh, Ungrim because Ungrim already has Hide Striker. Nice, spreading that Hide Striker around. Ally begins outpost construction, a Dwarf Bride, a Runesmith's Apprentice, a Stonemason, a Stonemason, Ambush Fooled, Enemy Killed, Enemy Killed, Enemy Killed, etc. <laughs> All right, well, uh, there we go, there we go. Gain a substantial income. Huh. I wonder what uh, increased our and in come on, maybe some stuff finished building or something. Anyway, it was a glorious fight, and I might actually clean up these armies between the episodes, because uh, I'm not sure that we are going to be able to auto-resolve them. Or if we do, we'll take so much damage that we won't be able to continue fighting, which would uh, which would be the issue. And there's not enough there to uh, concern ourselves with. Anyway, folks, with that, uh, we're out of time. Some glorious battles of uh, this particular episode, and hopefully... Oh, there's the Beast Catchers. And hopefully more glorious battles to come. Uh, looks like we did not manage to catch Ekich of Mordheim with Belagar's Ambush, even though the Ambush didn't fail, which is kind of interesting. Almost tempted to try it again. We're at 80% ambush if we do this. 
It's a possibility. But anyway, uh, we'll have to figure that out next time. Speaking of next time, we continue advancing in the north. We will hopefully knock out Draco's faction for good next time around, and that will enable us to retrofit these armies into the state that we want. Might also fight these undead armies, as we do still have to bring them down for one of our adventure quests. And King Lun will... Oh, right. I forgot about that. Oh, that's annoying. Uh, somebody informed me in the comments that if you block off this area, these guys start moving around, which is kind of dumb, but, uh, well, what can you do? We kind of had to move here with King Lun, and by virtue of the fact that uh, they were approaching it and King Lun's army was damaged, and he just tried to get as close to the Silver Pinnacle as he possibly could, but anyway. Anyway, we'll have to hunt these guys down as well. Lots of enemies that we'll have to hunt down next time, so stay tuned for more, and don't forget to leave those likes and comments below. All glory to the algorithm. And thanks for watching.